what is going on guys happy wednesday today i have josh with me from clearwater scrubbers how are you doing today josh good how are you Devin? excellent thank you so you were we were talking the other day and i heard rumors about working on something new for kind of some all-in-one filtration which i'm actually kind of excited about because usually the all-in-one market gets left behind on anything good for filtration i mean usually the tiny skimmers a lot of the tiny versions never work as well Right? No, yeah. no, not at all. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest complaint we've had from people is, is you know, how do we use, like, our CW50 mm -hmm. for, you know, uh, all-in-one tank. And most of the time, uh, the all-in-one tanks are less than 50 gallons. So we don't recommend running that underneath there. So um, we threw a little product out, a little teaser out at Macna for... Um, one that, on one of the companies that we have partnered with on it. We've got a few others in the works here, um, nice. but they will be coming out shortly. I can't say how long because we have to get patents on them now. Um, Fair enough. Due to due, due to some other reasons that I will leave out, but we have to patent them now. So That's fair. It's an unfortunate kind of hiccup to slow things down, but... It, it, is, it is. It is. I mean, it only hurts the end consumer because we've got to, you know, if you've ever, if any of the viewers, listeners, whatever, have uh, ever went through the patent process, it's a nightmare. So, yeah, it's uh, it's not fun. Nope, not at all. Two dollar super tech from Derek saying, "What? Hey, Josh, what's going on?" He's actually running a couple of your scrubbers already. So awesome! Awesome. I had him on a couple weeks ago and showing off some of his crazy oh, setup. Mr. Picker down in Phoenix. Yes. Yep. Yes. We had to dial his in forever. Took us a while <laughs> to get his dialed in, but we got him dialed in now. Nice. Excellent. Okay. So question all, all in one. So Shoot. generally I know I always just recommend people just do water changes because I mean, all in one skimmers are useless. People don't want to do water changes. So I mean, which is why I thought it was pretty cool that you're developing a skimmer to work in, or not a skimmer, a scrubber to work in an all-in-one, which is pretty cool because that's going to reduce, you know, all those people that don't want to do water changes. You're going to add in those nutrients, everything in a different means. So correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, for the longest time on the all-in-ones, the easiest way to do it was a water change, um, just simply because you're dealing with such a smaller volume of water, you know, literally mm -hmm. one gallon on some of those all-in-ones is a huge percentage of their water change. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, no, but the reason that we did it is, is not only um, we had some other people reach out, but Richard at Richard Back at Aficionado, um, he reached out to us about doing it for one of his. So mm -hmm. um, we knew how inefficient those, um, the protein skimmers and like the media reactors and stuff like that are for the all-in-ones. And mm -hmm. um, we took the most efficient water or algae scrubber you can, a waterfall, yep. and designed it for the back chambers on the all-in-ones. So, Excellent. Yeah. Now, I, I don't know how much you can dig into it yet because I know it's not released, but does yep. it going to have its own pump or is it going to somehow integrate to what's already in the back? No, it doesn't require a pump. Um, we're actually working on the lights right now. Um, they're going to be a magnetic light is what it's going to be for them. Mm -hmm. So uh, there won't be anything hanging over the edges uh, like we did at Mac. Now, we did acrylic brackets, but they just look kind of cheap and funky. Yeah. Um, so it'll be a magnetic light, um, and uh, we're working with the magnetic supplier to make sure that there's no chance of that magnet rusting in your tank or anything like that, getting that completely sealed up. And then it will just use the gravity mm -hmm. um, of the chamber that's already there nice. to supply the scrubber. So you never, versus like our current waterfall scrubbers on the bigger tanks and stuff like that, where you have to shut um, the pump down for the scrubber, for this you will never have to shut it down. Literally, it's just a little screen you pop out yep. scrape it stick it right back in you, you nice take you two minutes to change your tank that's pretty cool yeah so is this going to be targeting certain brands of tank or is it going to be fairly universal or how you go to the back? <sighs> there there's one manufacturer um i won't say them but we reached out to them and they basically slapped us in the face so 
I don't yeah. think we'll ever do anything with them. Um, it, it would take a lot of uh, paperwork and stuff like that. Um, we did do it with JBJ for uh, Macna. Um, we're working on their their complete line right now um, mm. with them. Um, everybody's been busy. There's been a bunch of shows, stuff like that. And mm. then um, we're working on one other manufacturer that does them uh, that will uh, – we'll see. Hopefully, they're, they're a big manufacturer. Um, we have emailed them, talked to them about it. They are interested. It's just, you know, between companies working out that agreement to get it done. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's good. That's a good start. Yeah. Uh, so Derek was asking, are you coming to rap? Will you be at rap? In- Chicago, I will not be at rap Chicago. We are um, finishing up our uh, BRS Black Friday order right now. Um, and there is just zero way I can get up there. I would love to be up there uh, walking the floor, but it just didn't work out this year. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I'm I'm so, cutting myself off until spring for trips. We we will be at Reefstock Denver, so yeah. that is, that will be our next show. We're we're gonna do Reefstock this year. Um, it just seems like, and this doesn't sound negative. There's just like a show every other week or every two weeks kind of thing. So if we did every show, literally we would never get anything done back there. <laughs> No, so, I hear you. You know, it's tough. We got to be selective on the shows we go to. And, you know, that's another reason, you know, products cost so much is, is those shows aren't cheap to go to. Mm-hmm. So. I, I feel you. I've been at one almost monthly this year. I'm cutting myself off for the rest of the year, but it definitely adds up after a while. Yeah. And you're, you're not even paying for a booth. You're, you're <laughs> nope. just traveling, traveling, in, traveling in the booth right here. I couldn't imagine bringing like pallets of stock and other stuff to show off and set up. It's crazy. Oh, it was nuts. And Macna was crazy. They wanted just the shipping company wanted like $1,200 for a pallet for us to ship down. I was like, no, I'll buy a trailer for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I so. <laughs> and Derek, Devin should be at all shows all the time. It is a lot of time. Like all, like 90% of my vacation is like going to reef shows. <laughs> Yeah, that's what a lot of people yeah. don't realize is, is, you know, the the shows are, you know, Saturday, Sunday or Friday through Sunday kind of thing. And mm-hmm. usually we've got to leave two to three days beforehand to get there. And then we've got to be there the day before or two days before. You know, th- thank goodness um, Macna let, you know, the place in uh, Orlando let us in early this year. Mm-hmm. We were there from Wednesday through yeah. Sunday. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it takes about what, would it take five hours to tear down at Macna? That, that place it, cleared out pretty quickly, but it took 48 it hours to set those booths up. It, it's a lot of work to set a booth up. So. Oh yeah. Especially with display tanks and everything else. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, we'd never had display tanks like we did, mm-hmm. you know, with that all in one scrubber there, um, at Macna and getting everything dialed in, you know, yep. so. So since we're talking kind of scrubbers and stuff as mm-hmm. well, so for people that have not used or don't know much about a scrubber, what is the advantage of, by using a scrubber with hair algae over other types of algae to export nutrients? Uh, 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 on the scrubbers, the, the hair mm-hmm. algae is a simpler algae. So yep. it will grow usually under any circumstances. Mm-hmm. Um, except for low nutrients. Everything needs a nutrient to do. Um, but it removes far more than like Cato or Calerpa or Dragon's Breath or anything like that. You know, mm-hmm. um, it does it basically the way the ocean does it. So, um, and it does it more efficiently. So that, that's the thing that people got to realize is, is it's, it, I equate it to a weed. Here's what I equate the hair algae to, and it grows like mad. I mean, it will seriously strip mm-hmm. your tank quickly. Um, Chris at ACI, he's running our um, big commercial. He's a nice big one on there. Yeah. Well, he's got like five in there now, um, but he's got a, our big commercial one on his 2,000-gallon system. It's removing mm-hmm. 0.2 ppm per day of mm-hmm. phosphates every single nice. day. Um it's went down a little bit now. Um, we think that's because he's been having some temp issues on the tank. And that's mm-hmm. one big thing with um, with the hair algae is, is 
the more we learn about it because nobody's really studied it till we came around mm-hmm. on what it can remove and how efficient it is at it. Um, that it's a, it, it gets a little temperamental. It, it doesn't like temperature swings. It, it wants that reef temperature between 76 and 80 degrees. Okay. Uh, you get above 80 and it, it doesn't like it. And I'm seeing that on my personal tank right now. I'm, I'm fighting, um, I got a big 580 and we switched from a reef flow pump to a dolphin. And, uh, I thought the dolphin was going to lower the temp on it, but it's 83 degrees pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Nice. Um, so, so so much for me ever having a reef tank till we move again. Where, where are you located right now? I'm in Kansas city. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's nice and cool now. I got it down to 81 last night, but it was, Mm -hmm. uh, what 38 degrees outside so yep you know, I, I just opened the windows and let the ambient temperature of the house bring it down hey that works yeah. all right so I, I don't know if you can say brands yet but the vaping gator is asking please say innovative marina is down with this <laughs> uh no they are not ah oh, done 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 well nope. whether or not someone's down with it i guess the question is how universal is it going to be the problem with the all-in-ones is, is everybody does their own sizing on the back. So mm-hmm. it's got to be tailored for that tank. Um, mm-hmm. It's not a one-size-fits-all. I mean, we're going to have, just with JBJ, I think we're going to have seven SKUs, mm-hmm. um, seven different ones. You know, okay. I mean, the lights are pretty much all going to be the same, but all the... Um, Filtration plates and the sizes of the screens, mm-hmm. all that, that's all different. That's all stuff yeah. we have to design to fit into that chamber. So, um, no, you... and Innovative Marine, I've looked at it. They've got like, what, 15, 17 different sizes of tanks. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just going to do it kind of on my own uh, mm-hmm. for them. But every single one is different. Every single tank is different. So, and to, for me to, for us to purchase that many tanks just to do R and D, that's, (laughs) yeah, it's a lot, that's a lot of outlay. Yeah, no, definitely. (laughs) Richard. Rather, rather than just getting the dimensions from them. So I can't, I can show everybody this, this is kind of what it looks like when it pops out. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty small. This one's like, six by four five by six or something like that but this mm-hmm. is what will just slide out of the out of the um plate that we designed to fit in there so nice. um we've got some proprietary stuff on there that we uh purchased from uh when we bought out grayfish aquatics mm-hmm. so right now we can do the bio cubes too so anybody with a bio cube i think the nice. 29 32s 15s i think are what he designed um we can do those too so no that's awesome um so that's pretty cool i i do think like you'll have your standard sizes and there should be just a, like some kind of little adjustable extension bracket to make work in the non-compliant ones for people that want to do that little bit of tweaking just, it, just thinking it about it, it. Uh... maybe It'd be tough. It really would be tough because the problem Mm -hmm. not only is the where you're showing side to side, it would be the front to back too. Mm -hmm. Because you've got on most of those all in ones, you've got your return lines coming up there. Yeah. So you can't you can't shrink it both ways. And then to the this part here Mm -hmm. is going to be one size. So you can't. It'd be tough to make this adjustable too. It'd get pretty cost prohibitive for people then. No, that's that's fair. Okay, I, I see your logic. Well, yeah, there's a <laughs> there's a lot of engineering that goes into those. Mm-hmm. No, definitely. Well, hopefully there's a good spread because it sounds like a lot of people, even in the chat, already are kind of curious about it. Yeah, um, and you know, it's just gonna make things. I think all in one is a very expanding market right now, um, mm-hmm. especially with the younger hobbyists because. They're not buying houses. They're buying apartments and you know, or leasing apartments and stuff like that, where you can't put anything bigger than probably a ninety into them. Yeah. Um. So the this is a great, great product for them to do something, um, and, and 
put some filtration on those because for the most part you really can't other than filter socks and a you know kind of half half I, working skimmer yeah I, I gave up on skimmers on anything less than like a 40 or 50 because they just they're too tiny that is in my experience that just don't work very well it's kind of just do a five gallon water change you'll get more benefit than the dinky skimmers yeah yeah well and most of them are what work by an air bubble or on on most of them that i've seen so they're not getting mm-hmm. you're not getting the same surface area removal that you would with um you know a, a standard needle wheel or mm-hmm. skimmer like that no exactly all right so we got we got these coming out um now you're also coming out with some sumps sumps are out sumps are out so yep. um we're the first company ever to design and build sumps mm-hmm. commercially available um that hold algae scrubbers they will hold the clear waters and my part my business partner in it uh bud yep um that owns turbos aquatics they will hold his algae scrubbers so nice um there's four stock sizes of them Mm -hmm. they are available on brs right now they will be available on saltwateraquarium.com nice before the holidays Um, we just today we got the photos back so nice what um Uh, photos on your back what are your standard sump sizes? Um, we've got four here. Let me get the exact dimensions wherever I put them here. Um, the 25S, which is similar to a 20 cube, is um, 20 by 18 by 16. Okay. So it will fit in all of the Red Sea cabinets on that. Um, works works great for the 50. Um, that's what it's designed to hold. Um, has Filter sock holders, it will hold the clear roller mat, but we're going to switch to the Clarices. It's a better roller. So, yeah, we're going to switch to the Clarices <laughs> on that. Um, and we are, um, hopefully, first quarter of next year, we'll have our own roller mat design for it. So um, that's something we're working on for it. Um, oh, cool. Next size up is the 35S. Um, which most of the, when we say these, these are the gallons of the sump too. Mm-hmm. Um, that one's 31 by 16 by 16. Okay. So, um, works good for not, you know, a stock 90, um, up to 120, 150, somewhere mm-hmm. in there. Um, next one is the 50S. That one is 36 by 20 by 16. Hold okay. the, uh, 200. Mm-hmm. And then the 55S is 40 by 20 by 16. Nice. So, and that so, holds the 300. So, so or so it will basi- hold the 200 so, if you want the water volume. So basically within that, you know, two foot, three foot, four foot, minus the little bit of cabinet and everything else. So it's made to fit inside all the standard size tanks. Pretty much. Yeah, that's that's what we wanted to do was is make it simple for people um, that needed, you know, just kind of off the shelf stuff. So... Um, we will be doing custom stuff if you want something bigger or out of the norm, um, on those, or you've got just an off the wall build, um, we'll do custom for you on those. Those have to be ordered through us. The four stock sizes, we do not sell to the public on that. That's all through our distributors and retailers. So is there like an MRC or what's your rough pricing on the sums? Um, from four ninety nine on the twenty five S to, mm-hmm. uh, what seven thirty nine, okay. seven forty on the um big boy. Okay, nice. So, um, they come with, um, John Guest dosing fittings on there, uh, a cable organizer, uh, adjustable fence for your water height, uh, a bubble trap. Obviously, it'll hold the roller mat or filter socks on it. Uh, it's got your probe holders in it. And then you can run it without um, a scrubber, too. So um, it's just got mm-hmm. one big chamber there where your skimmer and your scrubber would go. So yeah. nice. um, most people will need to run a smaller skimmer than recommended mm-hmm. for them. Um, but that's what we recommend if you're going to run a scrubber with them. Okay, so, so let, let's dig into that a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. So... I have heard some people going skimmerless when using a scrubber, and then oh. you're also saying you recommend people use a smaller skimmer. Have you seen a big impact on you know skimming while running that? Like, is it reducing the skimmer production or like? 
what's been your experience when you, you know, having a skimmer paired up with a scrubber? For the most part, you'll see your skin mate usually go down mm -hmm. uh, when you stick a scrubber on there. Um, for reef tanks, um, 100%. We, we don't care if you run a skimmer anymore. Everybody, when I get, when I started this, and I think we touched on this the last time, um, was, you know, do, do you need a skimmer? Not on a reef tank anymore. Um, mm -hmm. You might need to upsize your scrubber a little bit, but leave that stuff in the water for the corals because that's the way the ocean does it. Mm -hmm. um, quit trying to get this ultra clear, ultra, you know, no particulate water and try to grow corals in it. You're, you're basically sticking your corals in a concentration camp is what you're doing. <laughs> um, and that's what a lot of people don't realize. And it's getting... The filtration's too good these days, almost. Well, it's not. It's not that. It's the filtration was so bad for so long, kind of thing, mm -hmm. where you know you had water changes. That was all everybody did. You know, mm -hmm. you, you you had water changes and rock, kind of thing. You know, um, they caught on with macroalgae's with Cato or Calerpa or you know mangroves or whatever it might be. But you know, I've been snorkeling a half dozen times and you want to know what I've never seen on the reef is a ball of Kato tumbling around the reef. So, you know, yes, it does yeah. work. Um, but it's not as efficient as an algae scrubber. Um, you that's know, fair. we'll get a lot of people that are like, Oh, he's a manufacturer. He's just pushing for that. No, that's hair algae is what grows on the reef. That's exactly what it does. That, that is true. Actually, if there's dead curls or anything, it is hair algae that's growing there. Yeah. It's, it's exactly what it is. So, um, so for reef tanks, no, we don't care. Um, fish only. Yes, you have mm -hmm. to, um, yep. cause you don't have anything in there that's going to remove that dissolved, you know, the dissolved solids, the fish poop, stuff like that until it breaks down to where the scrubber can use it. So mm -hmm. you have to kind of, you know, you have to remove that on a fish only. So, okay. um, I would recommend that if you're in that border zone, you know, like, um, like a 180 gallon tank, mm -hmm. I would probably recommend you go to a CW 200 rather than a 180. Yep. Um, if you're going to go skimmerless, mm -hmm. uh, just, just for that added protection. Um, if you're going to run a skimmer, no, obviously I would tell you to go with the smaller scrubber kind of thing. Um, yeah. but that, that's, that, that's the big difference. Mm -hmm. So, okay. That makes sense. And that's, uh, it's going to work the same way on the all-in-ones. It's the same exact philosophy on that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's a waterfall scrubber, and there's there, there's upflows and those bubblers and all kinds of other, you know, algae scrubbers out there. Um, but you will find out that there's nothing more efficient than the waterfalls. So, yeah. No, it's true. Um, now, one... When... Thing too like you're saying to recommend people use a smaller skimmer i mean if you already have a skimmer there's no point selling it what i would do is just run on say a timer run it like half the time or run it at night reverse schedule so you're getting a little oxygenation when your co2 your ph is a bit lower well that's if you've got a sump that'll fit it you know and it might not True. fit in one of our sumps. Yeah. that's the thing you've got to look at and see you know if um your skimmer footprint will fit into our sump mm -hmm. so um the, there's there's some new skimmers coming out, um, not to like be pushing a product, but those great whites, they have a yep. tiny footprint, a tiny, mm -hmm. tiny footprint for what they are. Um, yep. It's because the pump's inside of them mm -hmm. kind of thing. Uh, I've never personally used one, so yep. I don't know. I can't say how well it works or how well it doesn't, but um, they've, they've got a very small footprint for what they are. Nice. Uh, so Matt was just saying he, he loves harvesting and feeding to his t fish. His tanks go nuts over it. Plus it still holds pods. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, that's a big myth that everybody said, uh, algae scrubbers don't grow pods. The, mm -hmm. the pods love that algae. They use it as a food source. So the only difference is, is if you're not feeding it to your fish like that and mm -hmm. you're harvesting it and just throwing it away, you're throwing away the pods unless you reach that in and shake them out yeah. somehow uh, before you do it. So do you, do you have many people that would pick up a second screen say, and they just swap it out and, you know, let one float around the tank for a day and feed their fish or, you know, we, we had a lot of people that were interested in it. No, we've had one, 
one customer that pulled the trigger on it. Um, yeah. And I ran into him at Rap Orlando. He was mm -hmm. at Rap Orlando, and I talked to him about it. Um, first time he did it, mm -hmm. uh, it took him, what was it, five or six days for his fish to pick it clean kind okay. of thing. They were a little nervous of it, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it's pretty unsightly in your tank. I'm, I'm not going to lie fair. to you. It, excuse me. It's not something that is pretty and you want hanging in your tank. <laughs> fair point. <laughs> uh, but now his fish pick it clean and what do you say, 24 or 36 hours, yep. literally they're, as soon as they see it come by the tank, they're all lined up waiting for it. And then he just <laughs> slaps it back in his sump, and keeps it wet till the next screen's ready to go. So nice. yeah, that he, works. he never has to harvest it for the people that don't like touching algae. I don't get that. The people that complain about touching algae, but don't have a problem sticking their hand in a skimmer cup. <laughs> never understood that. Algae fish poop, pick your poison, eh? Um... I'll take algae every day of the week and twice on Sundays. <laughs> nice. Uh, so Paul is asking, does uh, LG scrubber help with pH like macro LG? It's about the same. Most macros aren't going to raise it up that much either. Um, you're going to see 0 0.1, 0 0.2 rise mm -hmm. in your pH, you know, at most. Um, okay. that, that oxygen exchange just isn't that great because it's not in contact with it. Mm -hmm. um, you're oxygenating the water by the waterfall and then when it falls through the drain again yep. um but no it's not where it's like a co2 scrubber or something like that where you're mm -hmm. gonna see so there's an effect know. but it's just not massive okay. no it's not yeah you're not gonna go from 7.6 to 8.2 by putting a scrubber on your tank mm -hmm. okay um so, all right derek is asking what's the lowest amount of time the scrubber can be on i still strip too much at 10 hours the is one feed running, more is, is derek running a skimmer Yes, I believe Derek is running a skimmer. So. Mm, I would probably cut your skimmer back then. Mm -hmm. um, I don't recommend really running them less than 12 and 12. Um, okay. If you're still stripping too much, start feeding more. Yeah, feeding more is good for the tank and corals. Yeah, fi find a dirtier food because trust me, there's plenty of them out there, and that's a big thing I can tell um you guys out there is is read the ingredients on your food mm -hmm. i cannot stress that enough we get so many people that have been feeding a certain food for so long and they stick a scrubber on their tank and they've been fighting phosphates forever and i it doesn't change when they stick the scrubber on there mm -hmm. and i have them tell me their food and like the fourth ingredient on there is calcium phosphate yeah it's a phosphate. You're you're bombing your tank with phosphates. So and rock loves to um, adhere itself or attach whatever to um, to phosphates. Yep. So once you get it in there, it's a nightmare to get it back out. You know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And especially if it's in rock, um, it takes a long, long time for that rock to leach it out for the scrubber to use it all. So. Yep. Um, Check, check, check your food on what is in there. Okay. Uh, Coral Lover says, I have a BioCube 32. What scrubber do I need? So I know these aren't out yet, but no. I also know you said bio, the BioCube was on we, the list. We will have a BioCube yeah. scrubber. Um, he can send us an email to sales at clearwaterscrubbers.com. Okay. Um, for the BioCubes, we can, we can do that for him right now. Um, he'll just have to use one of our 10-watt um, lights and figure out how to attach that to the back, whether it be some Velcro or, you know, some other way of a two-sided tape, something like that to mm -hmm. the back of the BioCube, but we can send the BioCube ones out now. Okay. Excellent. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, those have been for sale, so I can't patent that. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Um, Vivid Creative Aquatics, can a clear water scrubber be ran external or do they need to be in the sump? Uh, they can be mounted externally. We, we recommend putting them over your sump in case, you know, people get, um, LAR syndrome, um, or, uh, they just, you know, or it starts growing faster than they're used to. Um, mm -hmm. cause it, it, it's not a watertight box kind of thing. You know, the top mm -hmm. open on it, it can overflow. We, 
I had somebody send me an email that hadn't cleaned it in a month and his email, he didn't put that in there, but in his email he said, is it normal for it to fill, you know, overflow at the top? And I'm like, no, kind of thing. <laughs> so, um, no, uh, we recommend that you put them over a sump just for that reason. Safety um, precaution. But no, we've had, we have people that mount them externally. They don't have room in their stands or anything. Mm -hmm. The big thing that you have to do with that is, is just take into account, um, your drain length and how many mm -hmm. 90s you're going to put into it because it's a gravity drain. So yeah. don't don't try and put it, you know, three feet outside your stand and put four 90s into it and expect it to drain as fast as it would if it was right over your sump. Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Richard Reefs, um, LP scrubber raised my pH by 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. So there you go. It's a good experience from him. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Like hearing that. Yeah. LG scrubber really the biggest method of filtration of my aquarium. And I know Richard, you dump food, you shovel food into your tank. <laughs> I don't have you <laughs> feed. He literally just shovels it in there. It's ridiculous how much he feeds. So I would hundred percent agree with that being well, a massive and, benefit for him. <laughs> you know, and that, and that's where a lot of people in the hobby, they go wrong is, is they're trying to keep this ultra clean water. Mm hmm and they're trying to feed a whole bunch at the same time and yep. you can't do both. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. There's, you know, you can't, you're going to have some particulates floating in your water. You're not going to have this museum quality water. Go, go dive on a reef and see how much actual junk is floating Lots. in the water there. And you yeah. <laughs> And if you do want that pristine water, you just got to feed a heck of a lot more and feed that coral food and make sure you're supplementing it because if they're not getting it the rest of the time, you still need to give them energy, right? So, Correct. correct. You know, mm -hmm. and, you know and, and a lot of people wonder why their corals don't grow sometimes, you know, is, is they're starving all the time. You know, you mm -hmm. don't know when they're going to feed. So you might be able to force feed it, you know, by using – something like a polyp lab booster, you know, that has some phosphate in it and that phosphate triggers a feeding response for them. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got to put that in a little bit before and then you've got to dump the food in. So you've yep. got to wait a little bit. You can't just dump that in and then start dumping food in. It, it mm -hmm. takes a little bit for those corals to open up and, and, you know, come out for feeding. But then you have to find a way to remove that phosphate out of your water again too. So, yep. you know, that that's where, you know, the the – algae filtration comes in to get rid of that mm -hmm. it and allows soak, you to do that soak it up as it grows uh yeah. all right so zach was asking do people feed the effluent from their calcium reactor into the algae scrubber like a refugium hey, good question um yep. we had um actually we had one of the testers um for one of the distributors ask us about that mm -hmm. um you can do it. Is it going to make a big difference? I doubt it. Um, I, it's not in contact long enough with the mm -hmm. algae to pull that out to, you know, pull the CO2 out to make it raise up. Mm -hmm. um, he had talked about drilling a hole in, in the in the 90 on it and um, threading it and putting mm -hmm. a, like a John Guest fitting, a push connect yeah. fitting in there and doing it that way. You could do it that way. Um, but no, we haven't. We haven't had anybody do it. I don't think it's going to make a big difference. Like I said, I would just drip it in front of the feed pump or however you're feeding it. Personally, I don't know if it'd make a big difference. It'd be worth an experiment. To see. No, I, I yeah, I would just put it in whatever chamber you have your pump for your scrubber. So mm -hmm. that's gonna you know eventually get to it all anyways. But like I said, the contact isn't usually enough to do it. The best okay. thing you could do, honestly, the best thing you could do would be stick it in your skimmer and mm -hmm. let let it drip in there okay um derek was asking josh the only issue i currently have is the screen sometimes splashes sideways instead of straight down any suggestions the screen flashes sideways i'm assuming the spray bar correct me if i'm wrong on that one derek but i'm assuming the spray bar you're saying it splashes sideways it could to me that sounds like you have algae growing at the top and it's deflecting the water a little bit it, it, yeah the algae can grow up in there um just stay on top of your cleaning every time you clean it make sure you clean up along there um mm -hmm. i recommend usually cleaning about an inch down from the spray bar with you know a, a toothbrush or something like that 
Mm -hmm. um, make sure you get any algae that might be along there that if you push it up in there, that mm -hmm. it, you get it out um, mm -hmm. kind of thing, you know. And, and usually if, if you scrape it first and then do the brush, you're not going to get big chunks up in there. So mm -hmm. when you turn the water back on, it'll usually just flush itself out. Okay. Um, I've never personally seen it, but I just had one of my stores in Maryland. He actually called me and FaceTimed me with it, and literally it was shooting sideways. It was just his algae was growing so fast, and it was growing up in that slot up in there. Mm -hmm. um, so we've looked at, you know, figuring out a way to do a light blocker on it, but I just haven't found a economical way to do it kind okay. of thing yet. So it's just more – it, it, it sucks for me to say I can't do anything for you right now, mm -hmm. but um, just stay up on your husband husbandry on it and stay up yeah. on that cleaning. Make sure, you know, every time that you clean that screen, you run a brush up along there and get it out. Okay. And you'll sure. see it right away when you turn it back on. You should see that it's shooting water out sideways if there is something up in there. Okay. So physics. Can't yeah. help deflection. <laughs> no, we we've we had an issue um, beforehand with the uh, uh, the water wicking down the pipes. Yep. So um, everybody wanted us to put O rings or something like that, but we would have had to redesign everything and make everything shorter so the mm -hmm. lid would clear those O rings. So mm -hmm. instead, the simple fix was to stick another zip tie on each end of it. Yeah. Problem most people see is is they take that locking mechanism of the zip tie mm -hmm. and they turn it all the way straight at like six o'clock straight down it doesn't mm -hmm. sit flush against their square and round mm -hmm. don't sit square so you've yep. got to turn it at like four o'clock and then it hits that zip tie and goes straight back down into the chamber and that's all that wicking issue so that comes standard on all of our scrubbers now we did that six eight months ago we started doing that perfect easy fix yeah. There, Derek says, thank you, Josh. I will do a real good clean about an inch from the top. Yeah. And sometimes just play with that screen too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you're cleaning that screen, it'll move around on those zip ties. Just wiggle it a little bit with your hand. You just got to move it back and forth. It's pretty simple. Watch the water flow and just make sure it's flowing nicely down. Yeah. When you stick it back in there. Um, I lost who asked the question, but someone's asking about the Triton method in scrubbers. I've never actually used the Triton method, so I can't, you know, 100% say on that one. But You know, we reached out to them. Um, they've since reached back out to us. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that they didn't like about the algae scrubbers were that you were throwing the algae away versus, you know, the die-off from the Kato that stayed in there, which mm -hmm. I don't know why you'd want Kato dying off and re-releasing everything back into your water again. Mm -hmm. I, I don't – I'm not a scientist. So I don't understand the science behind that. But they already had um, – an algae supplement or whatever you want to call it to okay. for growth in there. So no, you can do it. Um, I recommend doing it probably with their other methods and mm -hmm. not the actual Triton supplements, but you could do it with either of them and not get hurt. But I'd recommend doing okay. the, the other methods with it. Okay. Excellent. Matt said, gotta love a good product with a quick fix. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. They're pretty simple. They're, there's not a lot of rocket science to them, but, you know, people get frustrated. They think that, you know, you can either – that you just stick water on it and it grows, and it's not that way. You've got to find that Goldilocks zone of mm -hmm. the correct flow down that screen. And when you find that zone, like, it, there's nothing, nothing you can put on your tank, even GFO, that will remove the nutrients like a scrubber will. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, once you get that nice bright flow in it, it just takes off. Yeah. Literally, Chris at ACI, he just put one on Amanda's tank, his wife's tank there. Yep. Four days. Four nice. days. I posted the picture up. Mm -hmm. He had algae hair, hair algae on it in four days. I'll I'll bet any other manufacturer out there to do that. Yeah, no, I do give you props on that one because I think it was within the first week anyways where it started to grow on mine. And other yeah. one versions, other brands I've used, it was a couple weeks before, you know. Took a little yeah. while to do anything. So, so. anybody mm -hmm. who's fighting them, that, that's a big thing we get is, is people don't reach out to us and they fight it and they listen to everybody on the forums. People, we're the manufacturer on them. Send us an email. We're more mm -hmm. than happy to help you. All right. So if someone wants to reach out to you, what's the, how do I get a hold of you? What's your email? What's your contact? You can email us at sales at clearwaterscrubbers.com. 
or yep. you can send us a PM through our Facebook page. So Perfect. Um, most of the time during the week, I'll even answer them late at night. Mm-hmm. You know, um, on the weekends, you're going to wait till Monday. Usually I'm, there's, there's usually a few too many of these in there. So I don't need to, <laughs> uh, don't need to, don't need to be giving you bad advice, girl. <laughs> Fair enough. No, that's awesome. No, I, I love to see the, you know, hands-on, you know, direct support, which is always good to see. No, we, trust me, I want to make this, the more, we don't get a lot of feedback from customers on, mm-hmm. you know, on how much it's removing or, you know, what it does, you know, specifically, you know, on pH or something like that, where the, that other gentleman had said that. Mm-hmm. The, the thing we get is, is it saved me from getting out of the hobby. That's, yeah. the, that's the one, you know, and I've talked with Bud about it. He mm-hmm. doesn't get a lot back on his turbos either. You know, he doesn't get quantitative data and that's what we need um, to kind of help you guys and be able to back up what we, what we say. But everybody who puts them on, they, they've been fighting stuff on their tank, you know, when they're at their wits end and they stick the scrubber on there and it keeps them in the hobby. Mm-hmm. But you know, the, the other thing, and this is for a lot of store owners where a lot of store owners are still old school of, I want to sell you salt and water changes and all that is, is sell them scrubbers, buy mm-hmm. scrubbers. It gives you, it reduces their maintenance. It reduces their water changes kind of thing. You get to sell them or sell people the supplements and then mm-hmm. you can sell them livestock because they want to put more stuff in their tank. They're not mm-hmm. fighting a tank. Yep. No, very true. I mean, the more successful people are, I mean, it's better customers, right? Because they're yeah, happy, they're going to keep buying people. fish, they're going to keep buying coral, so it makes well, sense. Well, it gets more people into the hobby. That That's my thing is, is I want to get people into the hobby. It's it's not a cheap hobby to get into, trust mm-hmm. me. I, the amount of money I've wasted on my own personal system before I became a manufacturer would make people's heads explode. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Yeah, I stuck with it and yeah. I want to make it to where people don't have to go through that learning curve that I did. Yeah. No, that's good. I, I'm just half laughing in the comments um, because this question's already been answered by like three people, but said I run the CW50 and I get a gurgling sound. How do you control that? Um, basically, they were saying you likely don't have enough flow and some of them increase the. What, sound, is, it is it a gurgling or a surging? If they're getting a gurgling, it's probably from their drain where mm-hmm. they don't have, they either have a 90 plumbed into it wrong or they've got some air stuck in their drain. Um, it shouldn't gurgle. Um, mm-hmm. it, you only need about 150 gallons an hour on that scrubber mm-hmm. size. Um, I, I wanted to make a little bit bigger bulkhead there so you, we didn't have to fight that drain so much, but the distributors pushed back against me on it. Yep. Um, but a half inch will handle like 250 or 300 gallons an hour. Um, but that's where I said you can't put a bunch of 90s in it or you can't have your drain pipe too far below the surface of the water. That's the yeah. big thing that we found is, is if this is the surface of your water and your mm-hmm. pipe's coming down here, you can't have your pipe like way down here. You've got to put it just below the surface of the water so that it'll allow the force, out of the gravity it. force of the water to push down. If you mm-hmm. put it too far in, that it pushes back up, and you won't get the correct drainage on your system. Yeah, so, the, the big thing is too, it'll try, it's harder for the air to work its way out, which can make those extra noises in it. Correct, and, and the big thing that we've kind of changed is, is instead of putting a 90 on it, mm-hmm. um, coming out to go down, is, is use a T. And, mm-hmm. and either leave the T open or put a cap and drill it, drill the top of it like a Durso okay. so that the air escapes and it goes mm-hmm. silently down the, down the pipe. So, that's good, good um, idea. yeah, I mean, that's just learning curve on our end, you know, on that. So, but that is for all size scrubbers too. You mm-hmm. know, that's not only for the 50, that's for the hundred, the 200, 300. Okay. Um, speaking of scrubber size, PR Fish Girl was asking, I'm going to be running a 190 gallon. What size should I get? I'm also going to be running a skimmer. She's in between. I mean, if you're not going to heavily stock it, mm-hmm. and you're not a heavy feeder, you could go with 100. If you've got a little heavier hand, um, mm-hmm. 
and you like to feed and you're going to put a bunch of fish in there and a bunch of corals, I would go with the 200. Um, mm -hmm. You'll probably have to cut the light cycle back on it. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it's always – I don't ever recommend oversizing your scrubber kind of thing. You know, some people always think bigger is better, but – with a scrubber, you, it'll get your water too clean, and then it creates a whole other host of issues that you get, cyanobrobsis, all that bacteria stuff from ultra-clean water. Okay. Um, so uh, they, I hope that answers your question. If you want to email me, I'll help you a lot more when you get closer to it. So. Okay. So it's better to undersize it than oversize it? Correct. And if it is oversized, I mean, the easiest way to turn it down is just reduce your light hours. Reduce your light hours, yeah. Don't cut don't cut the water off to it, but reduce your light hours. But like <laughs> yeah. I said, you don't want to run it less than 12 and 12 because then mm -hmm. your algae is never really growing efficiently. You kind of barely are keeping it alive. So does it take so many photo, so many hours for it to start to like grow more and explode? Like say, what if you ran it for like six hours versus 12 hours? Like does that photo period have a big impact on it? Well, you'll see it. Yeah, you'll mm -hmm. see the color change on it where it's not growing that much, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not removing that much out of the water. Um, so, And you might even get sometimes where it starts to die off and release from the screen. Um, the big thing that we always tell people is, is you know, where I make the, uh, what, similarities or whatever, the likeness of it to your lawn. So mm -hmm. when you seed your lawn – you water the heck out of it, and you want as much sunlight and everything else for brand new seed to take. It's the same mm -hmm. way with the scrubber. You've got to yep. get it seeded. Okay. Once it's seeded, then you can cut back. But mm -hmm. don't starve it out at the beginning. Let it let it do its thing. Just put it in your put it in your uh, sump or wherever in your mm -hmm. stand, and forget about it. It's the best thing you can do. Quit checking on it. Quit turning it off every day. Checking the screen, everything else. Put it in your stand and forget about it. For about two mm -hmm. weeks after two weeks then you can start looking and see it, two weeks on a brand new screen you, unless your tank is just horribly horribly maintained and full of nutrients mm -hmm. you're not going to clog the scrubber in two weeks yeah you're pretty safe yeah on a brand new one like i said in four days three and four days is about the fastest i've seen where it's just getting whisked little tiny little hairs of algae on it so two how, weeks. Yeah. How often do you clean your scrubbers? Me personally or what I tell people? <laughs> Me personally, I'm lazy. I let it fall off. It clogs. It shoots out my drain <laughs> holes. My, I'm lazy when it comes to it. Um, so I probably clean mine every 21 days. Okay. It probably should be cleaned every 12. Yep, that's fair. Um, I would tell everybody usually between seven and fourteen days. Okay. One, once you get it growing, that that's what it should be. For um, me, it was around the ten to fourteen day range. That's what I was curious. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, it it just varies. Type. It, it, there's not a there's not a standard answer for it. You know, that's like how often do you clean your skimmer cup? Yeah. Everybody's going to give you a different answer. So when it needs it. Yeah. When it's falling off and growing too big, it's starting to like inhibit the draining you're like ah it's probably about time well and you know this is one of the things like where you know because i don't test the levels on my tank my tank's fish only because i can't put any corals in it mm -hmm. because of the temperature on it um but when it starts getting way too when the growth gets way too long on the screen you'll start to see it actually start reducing the amount of nutrients it uptakes okay so you've got to <laughs> you've got to trim it back you know, you, you've got to do that. And then, you know, we've seen now with the people that test, when you when you scrape it down, it's about 48 to 36 hours that mm -hmm. you get a little bit of nutrient rise, but then that algae growth starts taking off and it takes you right back to where you were. So. Mm -hmm. Ah, good to know. I didn't, I guess I never left it long enough to see that point. Or I haven't well, tested enough, probably both. But the only reason I know that is is because Chris at ACI he tests his tanks every day, and mm -hmm. he was the one. He was like, "So it's this this day cleaned it here, and now it's here here here." And then he'd like call yeah. me on like Thursday, and it'd be back down to zero. And he's like, okay, "He's a perfect test client." Forty eight like, hours. <laughs> that's awesome. That's yeah. great. Yeah, Chris is a good guy. That's awesome to know that. Um, any other? Yeah, cool he's, 
he's put ours through the ringer on testing. So love it. I, I should get Chris on here one day. Actually, he'd be an interesting guy to have on. Oh, you would love him. He's a great mm-hmm. guy. Great guy. Yeah, I've talked to him at shows tons of times. So one of these days. Yeah, it, he's when when I have a question I can't figure out, I call him. So mm-hmm. love it. And he's running like I mean his scrubber's massive, but he's also running on a massive system for all the aquaculture stuff. Well, he's he's got our commercials, which is basically a double three hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if anybody saw that one we built uh, for Top Shelf up in Minnesota. That guy had a twenty five hundred gallon tank mm-hmm. um, with like five hundred fish in it. It was nuts. Was and, that at their new farm or in their no, this display? Is, this is one of Top Shelf's customers. Oh, their customers. So, okay. Okay. Um, it's a tank that they take care of, whatever. Um, but they reached out to us because they were fighting with um, reactors and stuff like that, and they were having all a host of issues. Couldn't get them to grow. Couldn't do anything. Um, mm-hmm. And we built that. It's basically a double commercial that Chris brought. So basically, it had four three hundreds on one deal. It weighed like eighty pounds. It's it's That's a beast. It, Go check it out on our Facebook page. Chris named it the Beast. Yeah, it sounds um, like a beast. <laughs> it's supplied by one inch and a half main line that splits over, and it had three quarter inch ball valves in it. It's it's a monstrosity. Trust yeah. me. I was when when they called me and said we need this, I started scratching my head on what the heck have I got myself into. <laughs> So, I uh, love it. We can build them um, big or small for anybody's tanks now. Perfect. I love it. Love it. Uh, Pure Fish Girl was asking one more time what was your email address? It's sales at clearwaterscrubbers.com. Perfect. Yeah, I'll put it in the chat. There you go. Hopefully, yep. I felt it right. And... For anybody who needs custom sump work, stuff like that, is uh, sales at cwtaquatics.com. Like Clearwater Turbo, that's where we came up with it. Okay, perfect. CWT Aquatics, right? Yep. Excellent. What is going on, Richard? What is going on, Arif? Um, Any other cool stuff on the horizon or any other stuff you want to touch on? Um, We're... With CWT, we might, I don't know if we're going to get into doing tanks. Um, I, you saw our tank that we did at Magna there yep. for the display um, that we used Antonio's nozzles from um, Vivid Creative. Yep. Uh, I hate, 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 I can't <laughs> hate them enough, powerheads. Um, <laughs> they, they they break, you got to clean them all the time, everything mm-hmm. else. So. We set up a tank. Uh, oh, the one with just, just the nozzles? With just yeah. four, four, four nozzles and one return pump. Mm-hmm. And uh, the amount of flow that we put into it was pretty shocking. Yeah. Everybody was kind of, that was kind of my harebrained idea of uh, putting a return up through the bottom of it. They didn't come through the back. Mm-hmm. We hit it with rock work, so it was yeah. real hard to see the return nozzles on it. Um, so that might be something we, we dip our toe into on is, is getting those off the ground and kind of mm-hmm. changing that. So people don't have to waste money on power heads. I'm sure I'm going to upset some of the power head makers on that, but nice. build a better yeah. product that could have options. Yeah. I just, I hate wires. They look, they're unsightly on the side. Mm-hmm. Even the gyres, I mean, they're, they're directional, but they don't cover long distances you know mm-hmm. you got about three feet and then you're running out of room with them kind of thing so you know yep. it's uh people like me who got big 10 foot tanks that have issues so um i just put eight of those random flow generators on my system and the amount of flow i have in that tank now mm-hmm. is crazy insane. amounts so what what are you using for a pump like how much gph are you pumping through i have a dolphin 9250 on that so okay. i'm pumping with my, it's running wide open, so mm-hmm. I'm probably putting seven thousand gallons an hour through my tank, kind nice. of thing. A good chunk. Yeah, but it, I had him, you know, and this isn't anything bad against this manufacturer, but I had 
two MP40s that died on the back. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm tired of replacing them. Yeah. I'm tired of replacing the wet sides for them. You know, With and every time a wet side burns itself out, um, it seems to burn out the power supply. So I, yeah. I have the motherboard that works mm -hmm. fine, but I'm always buying a wet side and then the, the power plug. So yeah. it gets expensive. So um, on those, definitely, yeah. It, hit, hit up Antonio at random or at Vivid Creative. Yep. They are life changing for your tank. So I, and there's no moving parts on them. Which is cool. A big thing I find too is um, the more flow you put through them, the better they work. When I was playing with them too. To, to a point, to a point. And, and he, uh, you, you have to put whatever he recommends through them. Mm -hmm. um, but you can put too much through them, I think, too. So mm -hmm. um, I haven't found that zone yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we came close on that 90, real close, because we had a pump doing, God, what were we doing? About 25 to 100 to 3,000 gallons an hour through a 90. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was quite a bit. So on that. Uh, nice. uh, okay, before this one scrolls away on me, uh, a couple of people are asking around cycling a tank and putting a scrubber on and if there's going to be any effect on like the cycle, bacteria, algae, new tank process. I, I don't recommend doing it just because the hair algae will remove ammonia. Mm -hmm. So granted, it's a brand new screen and you're not seated and everything, but there's a slim chance that you know like okay. that tank that scrubber went off in four days it's already removing ammonia mm -hmm. in four days so um it could be messing with the nitrogen cycle if there's no ammonia to feed it yeah i mean the i don't have scientific on it chris mm -hmm. sets his up but he when he cycles his systems down there he cycles them for like literally two months yeah. before he puts any coral into them. So I know his are pretty well cycled on that, and he uses mm -hmm. stuff that hobbyists won't use to cycle their um, mm -hmm. aquariums on there. Uh, but I don't recommend it. Just just wait. Okay. When you're ready to put fish in there, you can fire it up. It, it's not going to it's not gonna hurt anything, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. So I'd rather have... Um, wait a few weeks. <laughs> I, I'd rather have you be angry at me for waiting then you be angry at me for you have a whole host of issues because I told you to put it on there right away and your tank never cycled. That's fair. No, nope. good point. Nope. Um, and yeah, soaking up ammonia is actually one thing that Terology is extremely good at. Oh, terrific at it. Terrific mm -hmm. at it. So it, it, it thrives on that stuff. Especially a fish only system. It, that'd probably be in its extra element. It's just like whoosh, sucking everything out of there. Yeah, um, you know, and, and I will say if people are going to go to not doing water changes when running a scrubber is put by a trace element, whether it's Brightwell, Red Sea, whatever, mm -hmm. you've got to put those trace elements back in there. The algae scrubber is sucking it up. So mm -hmm. um, at what quantities, I don't know, but it's it's sucking them up just like the corals will. So you've you've got to put those trace elements back in you can't just put the big three in and mm -hmm. expect it to keep growing so a lot of people you know we've you know we're we're kind of dealing with that um right now um with aci is, mm -hmm. is we saw a drop in growth and we weren't sure if it's the temp thing or if it's um right out of the elements the elements and yeah. i i would i think it might be a combination of both but mm -hmm. Um, I can't stress people enough that that is those trace elements are very, very important and you yeah. have to put the right ones back in. Oh, excellent so, point on that one. Yep. Yeah. So perfect. Especially there's such a big trend or push of people that just don't want any water changes anymore. So that's a big point. Yeah. Well, and, and when I say that, I say that for reef tanks, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, on my personal tank, like I said, it's fish only. It's going to keep growing, but I have enough water volume that I don't think I could I could probably run my scrubber for five years and never suck the iron out of it. Mm -hmm. um, for other people that are running fish only, you might have to dose some iron into it, and, and you'll see the growth change kind of thing. So mm -hmm. you might not need the, excuse me, the other trace element that, you know, the corals will need, but your scrubber still needs it. Mm -hmm. So that that's where 
we're, you know, we're learning. You know, we're only in year three of being out there and really getting these to the masses and getting them tested like this. So we're learning new stuff every day, just like you guys are on it. Um, but this is how the ocean does it. I can't stress that enough. This is a scrubber is exactly how the ocean does it. So if you want your tank, and that's what we're trying to do is is recreate the ocean just on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. You need to do it pretty much how Mother Nature did it. She's been doing it pretty good for the last five billion years. <laughs> She's got it figured out by now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of got it nailed down. <laughs> No, it's fair. And it, it's so true. I mean, that's what we are trying to do is mimic the ocean. And I'm glad you brought up the trace element thing because no one ever talks about that with scrubbers. And if you're not doing water changes, it's the only place you're really going to get it if you're not dosing it, right? No, yeah. If you're, yeah. Because, I mean, you get it a little bit, but you're always running in a deficit even when you're doing water changes because there's no testing out there other than probably ICP, mm -hmm. or, you know, or Triton's testing where they're going to go that in depth on it. And the accuracy on that is even in question. Sometimes, you know, you get a little margin of error on those. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't think you're ever going to hurt yourself dosing trace elements back into your system. No, I actually just picked up a doser so I could finally automate that instead of doing it weekly when I remember. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, when, and Red Sea does theirs based off of calcium, Mm -hmm. you know, uptake. Um, I don't know how Brightwell does theirs, um, but definitely get a trace element yep. you know, bottle and get it into your system. No, nope, exactly. Perfect. Well, I think I answered, well, you answered. Hopefully I caught most of the questions in the chat. And hopefully I didn't miss anyone. If I did, apologize. Ask again. Uh, was there anything else that you want to touch base on today, Josh? Um... Let me throw this out there because I, right. I thought you did something with Levinson the other week. And, you know, I, I, I respect Mark. I look up to him. Um, quit with the no pox. Your friend, you're, you're friends with Jason. You're, you don't know me, but I'll be more than happy to either get a scrubber from Jason or I'll send you one, but get rid of the no pox. <laughs> you're, you're, you, you do everything right, but you're fighting a scrubber. I don't get it. Please, please, you know. I, I think I, Mark's in the chat too, so. Is he? I hope so. I'll send you one, Mark. I will send it to you free of charge. <laughs> Get rid, throw it in the trash, take a video burning it. Get rid of the no pox. <laughs> you don't see, there's nobody, there, Mother Nature isn't standing outside dumping a big thing of no pox into the ocean. I've never used no pox. I, 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 He's, I'll give him credit. He's stuck with it longer than anyone I think ever would, but good Lord, the amount of issues he's had with the slime and it not reducing everything, please. Mm -hmm. you're, you're friends with Jason Langer. He builds a great scrubber. I'll send you one if he won't, but <laughs> stick a scrubber on there. <laughs> uh, we'll see if he does it. It'd be interesting. I, um, I hope he. I hope he does. I'm not. I'm not trying to call him out. I just. I. I I'm over the carbon dosing. It's. You I, know. I, I tried it short term, but. Here, here's my issue with carbon dosing is is um. It's similar to. A person being an alcoholic. Okay, so it takes a little bit at the start, and it kickstarts that bacteria, mm -hmm. but you have to do it every single day or you don't get the um, benefits of it. But mm -hmm. over time, and we don't know how long that is, um, you got to keep adding more and more and more in there to get the same effect that you were before. So mm -hmm. why? Why? I mean, other than this like fast food instant culture of it, why are you dumping this crap into your tank? It, it's not how the ocean does it. So quit doing it. Quit introducing something. There's nobody standing outside dumping a bottle of vodka into the ocean over the reef. <laughs> there may be some drunk sailor. You never know. Maybe, but, <laughs> you know, it just, I don't get it. Like, I uh, just stop. Stop, people. Go If you're not going to use a scrubber, get a refugium, grow some Kato. Mm -hmm. get do something but quit carbon dosing mm -hmm. you're, what 
You're uh, just asking for your tank to go nuclear. Uh, I did it short term, and on my yellow tank, there was like this weird, like orange blotchiness that started coming. I'm like, nope, it's all done. And then I just quit doing it after that. But yeah, and I don't there's think just there's some weird side effects. Done on it, kind of thing. To you know, what what else it does in there? You know, um, yeah, it it is a sugar, and the bacteria feed off of that. And they explode in there and everything else. But like I said, it, it's your body similar, you know, it turns your tank into an alcoholic, you know, um, whether it's vinegar, you know, or no pox or vodka or whatever else it might be. It, it, it's sugar is what mm -hmm. it is. You're, you're turning your tank into a fat kid, basically, <laughs> you know, and, and if you don't mm -hmm. feed that fat kid one day, your tank goes nuclear and you lose everything because all the bacteria doesn't keep up, mm -hmm. you know? So it just, I mean, do it, do yeah. it the way mother nature does it. Don't, don't get this instant <laughs> fix. Nothing in this yeah. hobby comes quick. Take your time. Yeah, please. <laughs> I want to keep people in the hobby, not have them nuke a tank. I'm with you. Uh, Matt Faulkner, don't waste good vodka. Sheesh. <laughs> Don't waste any vodka, whether it's good yeah. or bad. If it's bad, mix it with Red Bull. There you go. Or, or uh, tomato juice and have a Bloody Mary. <laughs> uh, Pure Fish Girl Dollar Ninety Nine Super Chat for awesome content. Thank you. Awesome. Always appreciated. Thank you. Thanks, Josh, for coming on today and helping with the awesome content. <laughs> Definitely. When we uh, when we get this straightened out with the uh, all in ones, uh, we'll have to come back on. So it's gonna. Like I said, it'll probably be... I, I want some product demos when you got those babies made. I want to see these babies in action. Yeah. Um, these photos, and, videos, I want something. Yeah, well, I yeah. mean, we'll have them on the tanks and all that. We've got to test them, make sure they work, um, that sort of thing. But, you know, it's uh, the big thing is, is just getting the patent, protecting us from um, people ripping off our designs now. I, I Understandable. I, I I, I, I've think, seen some mighty similar. Well, I just didn't think that it was ever going to come to that, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, not to sound arrogant, but because of Clearwater Scrubbers is how algae scrubbers have got kind of in the mainstream now. And mm -hmm. now everybody's trying to jump on it. And I, I'm not, I, I don't care about competition, but don't steal my designs, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. So, um, yeah, and it sucks for the hobbyist because that's an added cost that I don't want to have to pass on to you. But getting a patent ain't cheap. You know, it's mm -hmm. ten, twelve thousand dollars easily, real quick. Ouch. Well, yeah, the, I didn't know those attorneys. They they go to law school and then they have to go get another degree just to get a patent. So that's a that's a whole learning curve I didn't want to learn. Yikes! Yeah, no kidding. That's crazy. So, any other anybody else got any questions out there? Yeah, what else we got? What would a reef tank look like as a diabetic? Uh, <laughs> no I'll pox equals cyano. We can write that book. Yep. So out of that one. Um, I think we got everything. Thanks for the extra little bonus tidbits on the trace elements. That's a very good point. I never thought I would to put bring that one to light before, so I'm glad you did. It's something, you yep. know, it's something we're learning, you know. I, kn I knew you had to dose them back in. I just didn't know at what rate the scrubber used them up, and it's mm -hmm. it's a little bit higher than I thought it was. Yep. Um, so, you know, we, we see that um, just in – and the easy way to see it is is if your levels start rising. You mm -hmm. know, if your scrubber's removing 0.1 – every other day and all of a sudden it goes to 0 0.02 or something mm -hmm. you get a drastic reduction yep. something's up you know and you haven't changed anything you haven't added anything you haven't changed your feeding schedule something's up and you know we mm -hmm. that's where we had to figure it out is is you know we the trace elements yep so and i can get i can give i can give credit to that on uh chris at aci and mr vincent chalier for figuring that out nice Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Derek, are you ever going to sell a bigger clear water like a CW1000? Well, I mean, we have the commercial units that we do. Um, I don't think we'll ever sell anything like that through our distributors kind of thing just because the sheer weight and size of them, um, UPS will break yeah. every single one that shows up. Um, so 
that's some that's something we already sell. Mm-hmm. It, it's just it's got to be um, air freighted. So uh, it's something like you know uh, corals and stuff like that. You have to go to the airport and you have to pick it up. So yep. and and in the scheme of things, it's literally cheaper than shipping it on UPS, and you really? get it the next day. Yeah. Yeah. That's all yeah. right then. And it, it won't show up broken. You can't. Yeah. You, you don't have to blame us for something showing up broken then. Mm-hmm. Um, Matt, your ATO reservoirs are badass too, people. <laughs> oh, I didn't even, I didn't even bring those up completely. I know. Those. Yeah, we've got two stock sizes on those, a five and a 10. So they have... Uh, How big are uh, they? What are the dimensions? Four and a half by 16 by 16. So it's four and nice. a half inches wide, 16 nice. long, 16 tall. That's a good size, actually. Um, the 10 gallon is nine and a half by 16 okay. by 16. Nice. So um, they have the gallon marker on the front. They're all black except for the front. Yep. The front's clear so you can see it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got a hinge lid on it so you don't lose your lid, mm-hmm. obviously, when you do it. And um, it's got a cable organizer at the back so you can nice. run your, your tube and your uh, pump wires out through that. So. And they're they're perfectly matched to our sumps, so beautiful. Like it. Um, so they'll match up, butt up perfectly against it, and just look good together. Perfectly side to side, same height, same depth, everything. So yeah, they, they look real good. Because I'm not one. There, there's a lot of sump manufacturers that like building sumps with the ATO reservoir built into it. Mm-hmm. I'm not that guy. I'm we're not that builder. We'll do it for you if that's something you want, but it's not something we're going to offer stock mm-hmm. just because yeah, we, we we trust our welds and but there's always that small chance of a pinhole leak on with uh, with acrylic and I would hate 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 for mm-hmm. there to be some cross contamination on it. So Yeah. No, that's fair. I've I've never used one that was all in one, but I have seen them out there. So, but yeah, I have seen them, and I don't think you could probably go much bigger than a five gallon on it. But mm-hmm. in the scheme of things, it's not really any bigger. Yeah, you know, kind of thing. It's going to be the same. Same size at the end of the day. Same size on it, so it just okay. It is what it is. Makes sense. All right, I'm going to Google your ATO containers after and check them out. They're on uh, salt water. Are they? Okay, we're perfect. Water, so we're we're working out um, with BRS if we're going to drop ship those. I think that might be a drop ship thing. I, we're still talking to them about them. Nice. Oh, just, it's a big bulky item. I understand um, why they don't want to stock them, kind of thing. You know, it's a big bulky item that isn't a huge mover, kind mm. of thing. So if we if we warehouse it, just they're not. Um, they're, they're big believers, and if they're going to carry something, they're going to stock it. Yep. So They look quite nice. Nice nice work on it. Thank you. Beautiful. Got that. Got the lid on top. Got the little hole for your pump and stuff. Nice. Not looking good. I like it. We check my own saltwater aquarium right now. <laughs> yeah, Kenny was, look. Kenny was the first one to take him on. He's good. So And, and we'll... Um, and uh, what else do we got? Oh, we got our pot hotels, so we'll have them mm-hmm. too. So those are out there. So if you are running a scrubber and you're worried about, you know, not having enough pods or whatever, pick up a pot <laughs> hotel. It's cheap. Derek said, Josh, just make tanks already. <laughs> hey, here's, here's a tank with a sump. Here's your all-in-one with a built-in scrubber. <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. Um, we built the acrylic tank. I don't have the patience to deal with acrylic tanks. Like mm-hmm. it was a nightmare. Trust me. I mean, he, we peeled back paper and we were finding scratches on them, even mm-hmm. under unscratched paper. And and you can't ship that out, kind of yep. thing. So it's something you've got to sand and take, you know, into account. Mm-hmm. Um, to do glass, that's a whole new animal that I don't know if I'm ready to learn. I've I've already started two businesses in three years in this hobby. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if my heart or my girlfriend could handle me doing a third. I'll never see you. <laughs> you know, it, I'm, I'm sure your wife, you know, when you started doing the uh, podcast was like, okay, enough. 
<laughs> yeah, I know it's it sucks up a lot of time doing doing YouTube it, and live streaming and speaking of podcasts that may be in the works. <laughs> yeah, so. well, podcasts or these live videos. Yeah, sorry, but no, I mean mm -hmm. it just you know getting the stumps off the ground. We Bud and I started this in February. Mm -hmm. I want to think February, I, January, February. I reached out to him, um, and it took us till what September to get them launched. So I mean, it's yep. it's no small undertaking, and um, the amount of equipment that you have to buy and just sheer space that you need. Um, yeah, you know, and and there's you know there's what a hundred different tank manufacturers in in the country. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'd rather partner with them if we're going to do kind of the, the center. Well, like the center return mm -hmm. kind of thing. I, I think that would be something great we could stick our name on mm -hmm. um, and partner with Antonio on it. And, uh, you know, I, I've got the rock supplier, so we yeah. could design the rock for them and it'd be a kit that they buy mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, but I'd rather partner and leave that with the pros on a tank mm -hmm. manufacturing kind of thing and let them do it, you know, whether that be – Felix or JBJ or Waterbox or somebody like that, you know, mm -hmm. they've already got everything in place. It's a small change for them to incorporate what we want to do. No, and that makes sense. Then makes offer sense. them a tank. Um, okay. One question, since I know you were just talking about building in space and equipment, are the scrubbers actually manufactured in the U S the scrubbers are annual the manufactured in the U S you're, you're looking at my manufacturing facility right now. Yep. So let me mm -hmm. kind of, I don't know if I can turn all this. Let me see. There's, there's our laser cutters and all that. Mm -hmm. um, so the acrylic is all, um, it's all Arkham acrylic now. Uh, the PVC fittings are all Lasco. It's all U.S. stuff. So you don't have to, um, buy adapters or anything. It's, it's pretty simple. Bulkheads are us made. The only thing that isn't made in the States are the lights. So, mm -hmm. nice. and we're, we've looked at it, um, on doing us manufacturing on the lights. It, uh, it's a tough deal. And it, you know, we'd have to change the whole light housing and everything like that. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's something we're going to move forward on. Not feasible for uh, that part. The the all in ones will be a U.S. manufacturer. That that product will be 100% mm -hmm. manufactured in the United States. That's all manufactured here, designed by us, produced by me. Um, our lights are going to be made by a company out of Louisiana. On that, um, the magnetic, you know, the magnets they're sourcing. So I'm assuming they're probably. The U.S. source magnet, so that is 100% a product that we can stamp made mm -hmm. in the USA on the box. Yep. Okay. Uh, Mike was asking, so carbon is okay. Carbon dosing is no, no. Yes, you're you're correct on that one. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yep. Everybody's big on this aqua char all of a sudden. I don't. I don't know. Well, I haven't messed with it. I don't run carbon because I like tangs, and I'm just scared. You know, I, everybody I... said it causes lateral lines, so. I run some, but not as often, aka I don't change it very often. So I run a small amount and I change it maybe every like six to eight weeks. Um, so I was actually sent some Aquachar. I haven't used it yet. I know there's a bunch of people raving about it. One of the claims was that it would like raise your pH or stabilize it more. And that's actually the one that got me curious to see if it would boost it up with the calcium reactor. So I'm going to try that. I haven't got around to it yet, but yeah, I, you know, I don't mess with it. So, um, most people I know that do carbon or use it, it, it doesn't have a very long lifespan. You know, mm -hmm. you, you leaving yours in for six, eight weeks, I bet it's literally, you could probably change it in six or eight days. Yeah, literally. that's what I mean. I don't change it very often. No, um, and, and that's the thing is, is it can release, it's like GFO where once it gets expelled or expended or used up or whatever, it can start dumping stuff it already removed back into your system. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, the scrubber polishes your water already. Um, you know, it, it can release some tannins into your water and give mm -hmm. it kind of a yellowish tint. Um, so if you want to run some carbon, you know, one or two days a week, 
something like that and a filter sock, I would mm -hmm. do something like that. But personally, if you're going to run a, you know, a reef tank and you're going to have tangs in there, mm -hmm. I think there's far too much, you know, science out there that proves that carbon can cause damage to the tangs versus mm -hmm. the benefits that it'll help for your reef. I, so I personally mainly run ozone. I run a very low concentration for mm -hmm. four hours a night and that yeah. does gets rid of the yellows. It gets rid of, you know, a lot of the, the funky smells or odors or anything like that. Yeah. And the toxins in the water. So it's basically like a free carbon in a way. Um, yeah. There's no better thing to nuke water of everything than ozone. So yeah. Yeah. I, if, and, if I were going to tell somebody, I would do tell them to do what you're doing, run ozone mm -hmm. and don't run carbon. No, so I still run every once in a while because my wife ever complains that it smells fishy or oceany. Then I'm like, all right, I guess I'll change a little bit of carbon. So that's the only reason I run it because I don't even notice. It's to me, I'm fine, but the, like, you got to piece this post. That's probably your roller mat more than anything. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> no. But th that's the point where I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll change it. Well, it, you know, it, it, you're supposed to. It's a mini ocean in your house. That's what it's supposed to smell like is the ocean. I know. Need need that sterile ocean. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> the much. Sterile ocean. Yep. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so they were asking about if one of the versions of the scrubber will fit in an Emerald 39, which I believe was a sump made by Trigger. Trigger. Yep. On the Emerald 39, um, I think any of them will fit. You just mm -hmm. have to make design. a little bar mount yeah you've got to put a piece of acrylic or egg crate or a pvc stand or something like that mm -hmm. in there to kind of hold it um up so um yeah I, I i can't you know i can't say i i don't look at david stuff from trigger mm -hmm. um so i i i can't tell you how it would fit or the best way to fit it in there um that's something you kind of have to figure out your equipment and figure Work out what what's in there. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's pretty simple though. I mean, you could use two by fours, piece of egg crate. Anything uh, you want really. A couple I, pieces of three eighths inch acrylic, something like that. I glued three pieces of acrylic together to make a little U shape just to make something pretty. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you could, you could do, like the, um, like the homemade, some, the, uh, skimmer stands that people make out of PVC and A crate. You could do mm -hmm. a lot of that. So many, many options there. Yep. Um, Zach was asking scrubber with UV. Sure, why not? Yeah, they're yep. they're not gonna they're not competing for the same thing. The scrubber is removing everything after it gets broke down. UV is not gonna remove phosphates and nitrates out of your system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, UV is so. more for depending on your flow rate, killing it could be pathogens or algaes or anything free floating through it. The only thing I would say is, is after watching the BRS videos on mm -hmm. um, their UV, mm -hmm. is it might slow down a new scrubber hmm. because if you've got it set to like the algae flow rate, yep. you're killing the algae spores in the water. So it might take a little bit longer for your scrubber to get seated kind of yeah. thing. But Good point. Okay. Yeah. That, nice. that would be, that's, that's not scientific. That's kind of anecdotal, but I would probably go with it pretty much that if you're running your, um, your UV that low to kill the algae spores, it's going to take a little longer for your scrubber to take off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nope. That's a good point. Excellent. All right. I think we've got everything and we've been on for like an hour and 20 today. So I'm not gonna, it's been a, it was a long stream actually. I don't <laughs> want to keep you all night, but I appreciate you coming on tonight. Anytime. Thank you for having me. A bit of a sneak peek of some of the new stuff coming out and a little good old LG talk. So it's good. Definitely. So oh. yeah, we'll, we'll keep everybody posted. Like I said, it'll probably be first quarter okay. uh, of 2020 that those all in one will be out so excellent we're going to try to rush them out for the holidays but i don't think that's going to happen and if someone wants to pick them up brs and saltwater aquarium for the water for our current four sizes of waterfall yes yep. um, okay. brs saltwater um aqua cave has them or reach out to your local fish store and have them reach out to us um okay. 
that that's our next big thing is is getting the fish stores to start carrying them because that that helps you guys more than anything out there so mm -hmm. uh, we've got people pushing for them to get out there um the uh all in ones uh it's gonna vary where those are mm -hmm. by um who's distributed by who and where kind of thing so um that might be kind of it's done through the manufacturer um of the tank and all that so okay no nope, yeah, i can't tell, i can't tell you on that price point I'm thinking somewhere it's going to be in the 125 range is okay. what I think is what they're going to run. That's not bad. It, nice. So um, the big thing is, is the light. I don't know what yep. they cost yet. So okay, we've got to figure that up. Nice. $40 super chat from VCA, Vivid Creative Aquatics. That thank a you, boy. Antonio. Awesome. Ooh. Thanks, Antonio. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. All the talking off all those nozzles today in that future product. <laughs> I, I now, now you definitely have to contact him and get that work in the works. Yeah, <laughs> get him on. Trust me. Mm -hmm. I reached out to him just out of the blue with a harebrained idea mm -hmm. of, hey, you know, I want to try this. And he jumped on board and was like, I think it'll work. And I'm like, well, I think I'm an idiot, but I'm going to try it kind of thing. And um, we built the tank and yep. it worked. It really, really worked. I was shocked, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm a big believer in them now. And, um, you know, if, if if there's a product out there that I think will help hobbyists more than anything that mm -hmm. I can, it, it's those. Put it, put them on your tank. You Use your yep. return pump. Quit, quit wasting money on other stuff, you know, that you don't need. Get those. They're 20, 30 bucks. And that's, that's the biggest thing. It's a price point that's an easy sell and you get is. good benefit from it, right? It's like a no brainer. So, well, and it's, it's an immediate benefit, you know, yeah. where the scrubber's going to take a little while longer or something like that, you know, a reactor or something like that. It's a cheap price point and you see it instantaneously on your tank. So, mm -hmm. you know, no. 100%. And, 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 you're already you already have the return pump there. The only thing yeah. is you might have to buy a little bit bigger return pump. But mm -hmm. I would rather spend money on a return pump than on power heads. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then you don't have those wires hanging down everywhere or, you know, some big clunky thing or, you know, a gyre or whatever hanging off the glass of your tank. Yep, exactly. Uh G Day Reefer was asking, is there a way to get the 1000 in Australia? Yes, there is. Um, yeah. <laughs> we're talking to Australian distributors, right? Mm -hmm. Distributors right now. Um, it would have to be something that we air freight. Um, mm -hmm. Ideally, on that, I would probably have you reach out to um, Chris at ACI. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know if he's like, and is he a harvester, or distributor, importer out there, whatever. Reach out to Chris at ACI because he'll be able to, we'll be able to get the paperwork done through him on it to get it over to you on it. And yeah, we can get it. We can get one boxed up and sent over to you. So. Okay. Beauty. So there you go. There you go, G-Day. Sorry, I saw that one pop up twice. So I had to, had to get yeah, back to that and, and shipping it air freight. Honestly, because it'll probably go like Delta or American, I would think, not anywhere else, um, is going to be far cheaper than UPS. So, mm -hmm. okay, perfect. There you go. And then we don't have to worry about it showing up broken. Yep, exactly. That's unusual for that big a tank down in Australia. So, think so. Uh, there you go, Matt. Yeah, Derek was on my stream last week, I believe it was. So it was so, so it's whole tank. Now Derek's rocking. I think he had he's the nozzles on there. You got the scrubbers. Yeah, he's got scrubbers on both tanks. Yeah, he's got two of them. Mm -hmm. So we gotta we gotta get his. He must be worried. It must be working on his reef tank like crazy. And yeah. then on his fish only is the one he's fighting phosphates on. But I don't know how you fight phosphates with that fake coral in there. I I don't get it unless that inserts leaching something in there. But yeah, we're mm -hmm. Need to get that one dialed in. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. We'll get it figured out. 
All right. I'm going to let you go. We're over an hour and a half already, so it's definitely been a long one tonight. Awesome. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Re- Email thanks. us if you got any questions. Perfect. Thank you Mark, for coming on. get a scrubber. Reach out to me or Jason. <laughs> All right, I'll hassle them too. All right, guys. <laughs> As always, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button if you're new. Make sure you subscribed. And otherwise, we'll be back on next week, same time. So for a few people asked in the comments all today, is this every Wednesday? When is it? So Wednesday, 4 Pacific, 7 Eastern. That's basically every week as long as I'm in town. So almost every week. All right, guys, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. Josh, thank you, sir. And I'll catch you guys on next week's stream. Thanks, guys. See ya.